Let's see, what are we going to do a mystery box on this week? I think I'll go check in the storage unit and see if there's anything good. Ah, uh, we've done some of these. And some of these. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Hey y'all and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics history and action figures and home of the mystery box and this mystery box truly is going to be a mystery to me. You see, when I set up my original secret lounge, I had a shelf for every single one of the Star Wars movies and I had my 3.375 collection displayed on it, but because of water and mold and all of that, I had to take everything out of there and completely redo the thing. When I did, I used my Hot Toys for my Star Wars display. So these figures were part of that display, but they have been in this box for, I think, six or seven years now. I kind of half expect when we open it up for it to do that, like, vacuum sucking sound, you know? But Star Wars A New Hope, I can't believe I'm even saying that because the name of the damn movie is Star Wars. Let's crack this thing open and see what we've got inside. Well, I made the sucking noise. Okay, here we go. Let you know when these were in there, they they were all like arranged by scene. So we're just gonna start grabbing and seeing what we got. Beginning with obviously one of the very first scenes in the movie with the rebel soldier from the the transport from Leia's transport. Now this is a good one. This you know these are gonna span the mid '90s Power of the Force re-releases all the way through into the 2000s. This one doesn't have articulated knees, but you can see that his hands are set up to be in that position for when Darth Vader comes busting through. So I think this is probably one of the earlier versions of this figure, but look at the detail. Look at how great that crazy helmet is. I always wonder what the prop guys were thinking when they came up with these helmets. Oh, here's another. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Are they the same? Oh, they are the same. I'm sorry, he does have articulated knees. I just couldn't tell because it's a cut joint and not a, a twist joint. Here is the same guy, only he's down on his, knee, on his knees ready to take on Vader when he comes through. Nice, very nice. There are going to be a ton of stormtroopers in this box. And wait, wait, ha ha ha, sneaky. This is Han Solo. So this was actually like a mail-away figure. So I think it was cereal. I think we had to buy like a ton of cereal to get Han Solo in his Stormtrooper disguise. Because remember, Luke in Stormtrooper disguise did come in the original Vintage line, but Han didn't. And so when the line came back out in like 1995, and there's probably a date on here that says something like that, the only way to get this was was through a mail away. Now, this figure sadly has is starting to show its age. You can see how the color of the plastic has changed. But yeah, as soon as I grabbed it, I was like, oh, there he is. There's Han's head as that original Han head sculpt. So there's a stormtrooper. Here is another stormtrooper. Yeah, you can tell. See how much lower the head sits compared to the one with the removable helmet? So this was like the first version of the Stormtrooper from Power of the Force. You know, they kind of had the pre-posed legs, still just the basic typical 5 POA at this point. And while these were an improvement and far more accurate to the movie than the original Stormtroopers that we got in the Vintage line, there still was a lot of room for improvement in these. Now, I'm sure I've grabbed... I'm sure I've got a bunch of these in here because I didn't like crazy army build these, but I certainly ended up with a bunch. But this is, we'll call this Gen 1 of the Stormtrooper. Here is one of the second generation, or one of the later generations. Not only much more accurate helmet, you know, the eyes are, are more open, they're not like smushed up against that top black line, but he's a thinner frame, far more articulation. And of course, the Stormtroopers are perfect for this because they have built-in joints that allow you to hide the articulation really, really well. Ooh, that's a good figure. And I seem to remember these going on massive sale at my Toys R Us. And so I grabbed a ton of them and there should be a bunch in here. Now here's a variant. This one is some kind of, you know, underwater pack or something. 
I can't remember exactly. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, okay, so it has like a an actual head underneath. That's pretty cool. And then this section here pops off somehow. I'm sure I've messed this all up. But anyway, so we'll, we're will we going to keep looking. He's got a cool... Oh, I bet it goes... To, it probably connects into this gun. You can see some of these. I still have the original rubber bands from 20 years ago that are holding their weapons in place. Here is one of the stormtroopers that has, like, the pauldron. I don't know if that means that he's, like, one of the Tatooine stormtroopers, but he's, like, the commander because he has the white shoulder pauldron as opposed to the orange ones. But very sweet. Has that that Tatooine Stormtrooper backpack on him. So we could definitely do Stormtroopers all day, but let's let's kind of veer off and look at look at some more characters. And why don't we go ahead and get into some of the super fun stuff with Cantina Aliens. Now, y'all are just going to have to forgive me because I don't remember all of these people's names. But man, they went through and really made a ton of these great cantina aliens i no clue what this guy's name was but he's like he's got sort of like malleable tusks and like an elephant sort of thing here look at how good the paint washes are on this figure i wish i could see the date that just says oh it says 2000 so this is a 23 year old action figure but just look at how much better some of that paint wash is compared to the figures that we're getting nowadays. Now, granted, it doesn't have nearly the articulation, but when it comes to just setting up a display, these things are gorgeous. Here is another one. Now, this, of course, is good old Hammerhead, um, one of my favorite figures from the vintage line. There's going to be a few versions of him, him in here. This, I think, was the very first one that came out, and what an absolute step up in sculpting. This was when I knew that the power of force of the power power of the force line was going to be so special. Yes, there is brilliant paint wash to give the depth of that, but just look at all of the details in this sculpt. And remember, these were like three, four dollar toys at the time, but they really went away from the basic molds and made each of these aliens so unique. So here's the first version, and here is a later version. He actually has, you know, some of his blue drink there. Even more paint app and paint detail, kind of that blue shading on him, more detail on his cloak and his outfit. Oh, so strong. One of my absolute favorite vintage characters. All right, forgive me again. I don't know the names of these guys. I do remember he got like a millisecond of screen time. He's got his little tongue thing there. But this guy, he's pretty big. I mean, look at how big those boots are. I mean, he really, you know, has heft when you compare him to just, you know, another like human cantina alien. So here's the guy who had like the devil horns and they really did do this well. I wonder if they could even make this figure today because of, you know, those horns and that look that just really, you know, would offend some people. But man, I'm glad they made him. Now he says 1998. So we're talking 25 years old, still has his gun in his hand. He's got the hard plastic cloak, but brilliant, brilliant stuff. There were also plenty of droids that we saw in Star Wars. I'm not going to call this thing a new hope. That's that's for a generation that I am older than. This movie is called Star Wars. Now, I recognize, I mean, you know, I gave in. I put a new hope on the box, but we're going to just continue to call this Star Wars because that's how I grew up. So, Here's a, a pretty sweet droid. I'm actually not sure what scene he was in. More Cantina aliens. Again, they got like the scarring of his face, right? All of that. Those like kind of almost like air holes that were right below his cheeks were in there. He has this tiny, tiny little blaster that actually should fit in that holster. And then I'm not exactly sure what would go here. There should be a bunch of accessories down in the bottom of the box. But again... Lots of detail on a really, really tiny figure. More droids. Obviously, this just kind of utilized the C-3PO mold, but is painted white. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, when you were a kid and you saw these bad boys coming at you on screen, these TIE fighter pilots, you were like, those are the most badass dudes on Earth. Like, I really, you know, 
if I were out there in the, you know, the outer rim or I was on one of those podunk planets like Tatooine and they put up a bunch of, uh, like campaign posters or advertising posters to join the Imperial Navy and be a TIE fighter pilot, sign me up because these dudes are so cool. Okay. Here's version one, you know, fairly standard five POA standard, um, proportions of the line here is like the second version. You can see much bigger kind of air tanks fitting into his uh, his computer thing here. He's got his gun, although it fell off. We'll see if we can get it to stick in. Again, there's the original rubber bands to hold them in place. But far more articulation as the line went on. They really leaned into that and gave us much, much, much better figures. Uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to see a year on there. But this was a later version of our TIE fighter pilot. And let's see here. Oh, yes, the Death Star Trooper. Again, they must have had a sale on these giant long-backed helmets. But this guy, uh, he came early in the line as well. He's probably mid-90s, like 96 or so. Um, again, standard 5 POA. But the, the, the shine, the gloss that comes off of this centerpiece of his chest compared to the matte black everywhere else. So nice. Here is one of the first sand troopers. So you can tell it's got that bigger head, but still a really nicely detailed backpack. He's got the wider stance. He actually made, this may have come with a Bantha, this stormtrooper, because I can tell the way he like can sit. Oh, look at that. He's got knee articulation. Yeah. I think this one might've come with like a Bantha so that he could ride around on that. It's cool. Okay, another version. This time, a, an extra plastic piece that kind of moves around with the same helmet. He's got a sweet blaster that's a little bit more silver. Gives it just a little bit more detail than our first version. You can see the proportions are a little bit more human-like, whereas these are a little bit more action figure-like. And that's something that we're definitely going to see as we go through this box, because those first... Star Wars figures, and I don't even know if I have any in here because I had taken them out of my display at that time. They were just supersized. I mean, they were like superheroic proportions. Whereas as the line continued on, and I think this was one of like the mechanics that worked on the X Wing, you can see they just they just look like regular dudes. I mean, he's just got, you know, wrinkled dockers. He should have sprung for the the no wrinkle ones, but they got more and more accurate to what you really saw on screen. Hey, everybody's got a drink. Here's another one of our gorgeous, gorgeously detailed Cantina aliens. Can you imagine if they were still making figures this good? So what? let's see if his date comes up. I'm trying to see. And I think that one says 2000 as well. Oh, but again, they just, they went all out giving us virtually everyone who was in the cantina. Here's kind of a, an Imperial officer, fairly standard figure. He looks like somebody who could have been in the uh, Indiana Jones line. If he didn't have the, uh, you know, the, the empire's logo on there, I might've thought that this was one of their three and three quarter inch Indiana Jones figures. Look at this. Look at this thing. I mean, it, it's almost like a slee stack, right? Shout out. If anybody remembers what a slee stack is. Oh God, look how many different paint washes, did it take to get this kind of detail on this figure? And this one, 2003. So this is only 20 years old at this point. Unbelievable. Good articulation, bonus articulation, both at the elbow and at the wrist. But it's articulation that while it does allow for some increased posing, doesn't mess up the sculpt. It doesn't screw up these gorgeous sculpt lines. Oh, let's see who we got. We got somebody with another little bit of a uh, little bit of aging on that white plastic. It's Luke Skywalker. Oh, he's a little short <laughs> to be a stormtrooper, but here is Luke Skywalker in his stormtrooper disguise. And again, he's got kind of the pre-posed legs, and he comes with this pretty sweet uh, blaster with a holster. But you can tell how old that one is. Let's see. I'm struggling because. I'm older than these figures, so it's hard for me to see the dates on them, but this should have been a 95 or 96 release at that point. Let's grab a few more Stormtroopers. Obviously, I had a gazillion in my display. Okay, I can tell this one has a removable helmet, but a little bit of a different 
and it's Luke again. So here is a different version of Luke. I think the one that we just saw, I've dropped him, but the one with the yellowing may have come in the capture of Chewy three pack, and this may have been the single carded release. Another one of those great Tatooine troopers. Actually, a couple of those. So these are identical. They look really good. Let's grab some more aliens because if there's one thing that ought to be super fun in this box, it's the aliens. I remember this cat got, you know, a millisecond of screen time. I remember seeing his head on the screen. But of course, all we ever saw was like the head. They've actually fully realized this alien with his like broken ankles. He has a holster. He's got these large three fingers, this great suit, and just just terrific, terrific. Those eyes have a great glow paint to them, so they really stand out when you're looking at this figure. It's so good. Here's 3PO. I wonder if this is the only 3PO that I have in this box. I tried to limit you know, the characters that were in there so that we had sort of the best representations of each one, and you can tell this 3PO has added articulation here at the waist, so he moves around, but very appropriate articulation at the, uh, the shoulders and the legs. Uh, but he's got a great, almost vac metal scheme to him. So it really, really shines in the light. I think you guys can see that pretty well. Here's one of our earliest Imperial officers, just kind of a, a basic figure. Again, those earlier ones have that pre-posed leg that you can tell. You, they, they really stand out when you get into some of the more detailed ones. There were certainly a ton of Rebel Troopers this guy, I don't remember them having kind of the bandolier, but maybe they did, you know? Uh, he's got a little bit of knee articulation there as well, so definitely a later version, darker-skinned individual on, on Leia's ship. Uh, Ponda Baba. And this is, I think, the first one. So this appears to be kind of the first version of Ponda Baba. I would love it if I could see. I would generally just love it if I could see. I One of the best things about this, though is that paint wash and the fade on his snaggle teeth. It is so good. And that orange coat really jumps off. And of course, they gave the eyes on these figures a little bit more of a glossy paint. So they 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 bounce off of the matte paint that's all around them. There's just so much love in these 90s and early 2000s vintage figures. I, I may have to set this display back up. Um, here is... Another droid, I believe he was rolling around on the Death Star. So this guy, I always kind of thought he was like one of the rebel pilots, but he wasn't. He was just sitting at the bar in the cantina. And I think, yep, yep, his helmet comes off. That guy looks so British. He looks like so 1976, 77 British with those mutton chop sideburns. He probably was just a dude who was, you know, on the set. And they're like, hey man, can you get into this uh, sort of modified X-Wing uh, suit and we're going to set you up near the bar and he's like I'll drink to that no problem uh, oh yeah the old gonk droid now this one look its feet do move actually I think it has a it does it has a play feature so you can make it move and it's more accurate it definitely looks more like the gonk droid from the films but it's nowhere near as fun as the vintage one because the vintage one had that clicky sound when you move the legs like <laughs> So we'll give it a pass because in so many ways it's better, but in the one way that really counts, it's probably a little bit worse. Let's grab some droids. Here is a green astromech droid. Some of these, oh cool, look at that. That's cool. So they used the later R2 from Empire so that when you turn his head, his, uh, his receptor pops up. And this one, yep, you can get him into kind of that position. You just remove the third leg from that droid. Dr. Avazian. One of the few that I do remember the name of. And that was because this guy was an absolute sensation when he came out. You know, he was somebody who had a speaking part in Star Wars, but never got an action figure. So when they got around to releasing figures that had not been released, it was always a big deal. Like if you were on early internet message boards, or if you're reading Toy Fair magazine, these were always some of the hottest figures out there, the ones that were getting their first version. Ah, I see something. Speaking of first version, this, I believe, was the first figure that represented the re-release of the movie. So when I was in grad school in the mid-90s, they re-released the Star Wars movies 
basically to pay for filming the prequels and they added in new scenes and this droid was a character in one of the new scenes. So it was like a big deal when this character appeared in action figure form because he was actually like a 90s creation. And let's see if we get... His got, he's got bigger feet. 1997 is the date on this bad boy. So that would have been right around the time that the, the original trilogy was re-released to theaters. And it was awesome because we all went. Here's a much more appropriate Tatooine Trooper. You can see he's got sand all over him. Still has the black polder on and not the orange one. I know we're going to find some orange ones. Um, oh, yes, here it is. Yay. And this is probably my very first one. Now, look at how dirty he is. Look at how good they did with the paint wash to really differentiate this stormtrooper. His hands are preposed so that he can hold his weapon like that. But again, we did not get this in the vintage line. And so it was an absolute, like, must have. And I remember, I think I got this one on the green card back, which was like the very first release. And it was like super rare and was going for like $50. I'm sure he's in, you know, 50 cent bins now, but not mine. He did. He still holds a place in my heart as my very first Tatooine desert trooper. So good. You know, and they kept going, you know, here's some more with this crazy deco. Some of these may have had like deco that like changed color with heat. I don't, I don't fully remember that. Uh, another god look at that he looks like bosk right so he kind of has the same i wonder if he's the same alien race as the bounty hunter bosk definitely he his head looks like that he's much smaller this is a significantly smaller character but he's got whatever alien species bosk was i kind of have a feeling that he he may be related to him nope got to save you for later okay there are creepy things and then there's the fact that there were praying mantises in Star Wars. You know what happens after praying mantises mate, right? Like, can you imagine if you ran into this chick in a bar? Is there any chance that... I mean, how much of that blue milk stuff would you have to drink to go home with the praying mantis lady in uh, the Moss Eisley Cantina? Hopefully a lot so that you didn't feel, you know, how everything finished from your praying mantis date. Oh, wow. All right, so this is is this uh, is this wedge? It's hard to tell. We did get actually we got a ton of different over the years. We got a bunch. They were able to use this body over and over again, and we got a bunch of different X-wing pilots. Let's start pulling them out. This may actually, I think, I'm going to say this is Gold Leader, just based on this helmet sculpt. Here's Biggs, and this was the original Biggs. Of course, another figure that when he came out in. Come on, let me see it. I think it's this way. No, I can't tell, but 97 or 98. When this guy came out, it was huge that Biggs actually made it in the line because he actually, his scenes were put back in, in the re-release. So all of a sudden he became like a huge star. Here is the original, the first version of the Power of the Force, Luke Skywalker X-Wing pilot. And we'll look at him in comparison to future versions because... It's just, you'll just see how far they came with the technology for these figures. This is, I don't remember. This one is, oh, 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 oh. Okay, I think this is supposed to be Wedge. So here's the newer frame, and here's the original frame. Now, this is obviously like a Red Leader or somebody like that. This, oh, here's the new Bigs. So look at what a difference between, let me see if I can find, yeah, here's the original Biggs figure and here's the, the redo with significantly better articulation proportions. You know, it just, they never were satisfied. They kept making the figures better and that includes everybody's favorite, Jack Porkins. Oh, they, how much do you love a, a slightly obese X-Wing fighter pilot? Now, granted... He turned into bacon on the surface of the Death Star, but we still got a sweet Porkins figure. Oh, love it. I'm trying to see if it's... Okay, here's here's obviously Luke with his uh, lightsaber. This is the newer model. You know, it's got the, the piping. Um, he's got his lightsaber, of course. There's much more detail. Look at how the boots are completely different and, you know, the pant length is different. So a lot of changes as they improve these figures. And we'll see if I can find his helmet somewhere down in here. Here is an improved Han. And so that means there's probably, oh, yep, there it is. Here is 
an improved Luke. So significantly better figures there. Oh, oh, we saw this guy. So here's a second version. This is the earlier version of him. So again, they made a whole lot better ones. This is the very first of that. We've looked at that, saving you. Okay, another of the newer. Oh, and it looks like he's got Jenga Fett's head. So this would have been a clone. This guy would have been considered a clone. Yeah, this was like Death Star Droid. So he was he was actually in the vintage line and then made his way back. So very choice. And not just a simple C-3PO repaint. He's a new figure. All right, let's get into some of the good stuff. Here's Chewie. Here's Chewie on the Falcon. He's got his bow caster. Put that right there. But this is him. This would have been like I guess right at the at the trench run, right when he had the when he had his walkie talkie up. So this would have been like trench trench run Chewie. Chewie did not get nearly enough variants in this line. Oh yeah. Oh, and he's so good. He's got look at that guy. He's almost like a little Ugnaught. So awesome. More stormtroopers. Ah, the bartender. And I mean, does this guy look like the kind of you can smell this guy? I mean, you can straight up smell this guy across the screen. Are you going to drink this? Really, would you drink what this guy is about to hand you? There's absolutely no way. No way at all. Now, this is um, this is Greedo, obviously. And this is the newer Greedo. This Greedo was able to sit at the cantina opposite of Han. And what's so important about this is this is probably one of the most accurate figures in the entire line. And I'm not talking about those great shiny eyes or that incredible head sculpt or the fact that his costume is completely screen accurate. I'm talking about this blaster because watch, watch what this blaster does. Did you see it? Were you able to see what the blaster does? That's right. It does nothing because Greedo never shot. He did not shoot in that movie. He simply got shot. So based on that and based on that action feature, this is the most accurate Greedo we're ever going to have. <laughs> so good. Oh, I love these. Um, who is this? I have no... Is this not like a Star Trek person? So she's got a drink, so she must have been at the bar. When on earth... Yeah, this is way too small for me to be able to see a date on. Somebody in the comments help me out. I have no clue who this figure is. That is that is just absolutely bananas. Now, somebody that we haven't touched on in this and is genuinely probably one of the most important people in the entire trilogy is the Princess of Alderaan, Leia Organa. And this is her at the end of the film in her ceremonial garb where her hands are set up where she can award the medals to not Chewbacca. That's right. The man was right there. He was on the Millennium Falcon. He's the one who saved Luke's tail, but he gets no medal. Only Luke and Han get medals. Although, I have to admit, that was actually incredibly touching at the end of Episode Nine, where he got his medal. Okay, I take it all back. That was a long play, right? That was, that was quite the long play to get the payout for Chewie getting his medal that we had to wait like 30 years for it to happen. But good on Star Wars for actually figuring that out and giving my main man exactly what he deserved. This box is too good. It, it, it simply is too good. Let's look at one more figure and then we're going to have to do a part two because these figures deserve all the attention that we're going to get. So let's let's pick the guy that I had picked up. Let's pull him out. It is... Grand Moff Tarkin. Easily the most overlooked, the most worthy character to have not gotten a figure in the original vintage line. And so when the new Power of the Force line began in the mid-90s, there was such a huge clamoring for Grand Moff Tarkin. And man, they came through. Now I really want to see the date of 97. So he came out in 1997, and this was everywhere. He was on the cover of all the magazines. He was the talk of every toy board that existed. If you were on Raving Toy Maniac back then, you were talking about Tarkin. And it's so good. Even in this scale, they carved in 
those cheeks to really get that just haunted look. Now, he has kind of a standard body for some of the other Imperial Troopers, but just a gorgeous figure. He may have been redone, and he may have another one somewhere down in here, but I will never forget all of our excitement as collectors when we finally got our first representation of Grand Moff Tarkin in plastic. Guys, this box is too good. I had no idea. It's been about 30 minutes. I'm not going to keep you any longer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to come back. And if you enjoy these kind of mystery boxes, if you like the channel, please hit subscribe. Leave me a comment. Lord knows, tell me all the things I got wrong because I sure don't know this stuff as well as a lot of you guys out there. And I would love to hear your comments. But as always, for the best in comics, history, and action figures, subscribe to Carbon Scoring.